Well, I'm dirty. The uh, truck is dirty. The trailer's dirty. But I told you guys on Instagram that I would get you a video of this new trailer setup, and uh, here I am. So hopefully you enjoy it. If there are questions, by all means, you know, comment, ask them below. Um, I ordered this trailer in January of this year. It took literally nine months to get built and shipped and picked up and so on. I'll walk you through the whole setup, uh, why I did what I did, uh, what the configuration is. I'll be honest though, it's brand new to me. I have not gone through all the systems yet. I don't know all the things yet. So uh, by all means, if you got a question asked, I'll do my best. A um, couple bits, it's a 21, obviously sundowner, 53 foot overall length, the biggest I could get. And it's because I wanted to fit two C6 Corvettes in the rear. So we'll go through that and more. Stick around and uh, thanks for watching. I thought I'd just do a walk around, so I'll be on this side of the camera for the time being. So we'll start here with my uh, 2020 F450, and I've got it loaded right now. We've got wheels and tires in the back. We're uh, actually prepping for the streetcar takeover in Rockingham, North Carolina this Friday. So if you guys uh, want to check it out, I'll have this whole setup there uh, this weekend, uh, and that is October 1st, I believe. Let's start actually down here. So I like this about the uh, Sundowner setup. You've got the external propane tank, which are not here, they're getting filled. I've got double batteries on the bottom right there. What I really like is the spare tire is on the exterior. So it's easy to get, it's not hidden. My other trailer, I've got it hidden under the floor and it's a huge pain if you get a flat. You've got to unload the cars and then fix the flat and then get back in. Uh, it's got a uh, electric, leveler also which is sweet so i can not have to crank it up like my old one it also has a lot of external switches so this guy turns on my light right there for doing the connection and disconnection which i thought was a cool addition you've got hookups for water you've got your main power 50 amp hookup you've got your cable tv which obviously is pretty antiquated you've got either a hot water heater or a furnace right there and i had them put on extra plugs on the outside and so i've got a set here and a set way down there you probably can't see you've got sewer hose and then you've got your disconnect or not your disconnect your, your empty for your wastewater and your sewage water and then down here i thought this was kind of cool there is a fill for the generator it's a gas generator a 7kw and if we look underneath it's got a 30 gallon tank underneath so for 7kw 30 gallons will get you i think two days on on 100 usage so walking back we've got triple axle i believe they're 8,000 pound axles because you can have a 24,000 pound total load here although i can't tow that much you can have it we've got our other plugs on the outside here and let's go up the ladder for a second and i'll show you how this works and why so bear with me so I'm on top of the trailer at the moment, and this is where the generator lives. And the reason it lives here is because I needed all the floor space I could for the actual cars. Uh, while we're up here, we've got two AC units, one for the garage area, one for the living quarters, and then some skylights and whatnot. And we'll head back down. All right, so we're back down. So here's the ramp setup, and this was the best that I could do given the uh, the lowness of the cars and the fact that our our ramp from the trailer is not sufficient to load cars. Um, I've got the race ramps, which extend to another almost seven feet. This works really well for loading and unloading. Before I get too far, we've got more external switches here, and one does our lights up here, and that's our switch bank on the outside here. The other does interior lights. Uh, but again, nice job on uh, this trailer from Sundowner in general. It's got some issues, but it's all new trailer stuff, and I'll show you those along the way. Um, one dumb thing was they didn't they didn't uh, fill the penetrations for the generator on top, so I had to go through and manually make sure those were sealed, which is dumb. Uh, that's on them. And a couple other minor things, but let's keep walking around. It's got a door in the back, which I like for getting in and out if you're without having to you know pull the, the ramp all the way down. Uh, you could open this back door which is cool i don't like these these are manual so you literally have to push them up and they stick on that little guy right there not a huge fan but is what it is if you'll notice along the side here we've got some buckling on some of this right here 
And again, it's new trailer stuff. I will get it fixed, but it's still kind of dumb. Uh, if I back up, I've got double awnings here. So it's two 20 foot awnings. And that's just for at the track, getting out of the sun and, uh, and again, trying to be more comfortable when we're out. We were at uh, an event in Arkansas in July of, I think it was 19 and it was absolutely unbearably hot, but is what it is. So we'll keep walking up and again, extra plugs on the outside. I've got a set here and a set on the back there by the back door. And then another set up here by the front door. So plugs are important. I added a bunch to this, this truck or this trailer. Uh, on the outside here, we've got either again a furnace right there or a hot water heater, I forget which. But I put, had them put the external speakers because at these events, often you are at the, the whim of the announcer as to what you do and where you go and when you do it. So I had them put, had them put these speakers on the outside so we could actually hear what the hell was going on. And before I get inside, yeah, that's about it over here. Um, just so we're clear on layout, so above the bed here, that's the bedroom. Uh, and then you've got 12 foot, essentially, of living quarters, and then a 33 foot garage to make up the 53 foot. And so if we come in, this is our 12 foot living area. And I know it's kind of cramped, but I'll try and walk through the whole thing. So this is a couch slash bed. And my son and I are going to use this this week to go to SCT, and he's going to his bedroom for the for the time being. We've got close this door. We've got our burner top, and I like the fact that you've got the counter space here, which is cool. Then you've got the sink, and again, you've got a little extra counter space with that insert. You've got your microwave, and then your pump control and your levels. And then you've got an upgraded, I think this is an eight cubic foot. I think the default is a six cubic foot, so a bigger fridge, which is nice just for these events so you can store drinks and food and such. Uh, you got a TV out here and then some storage and you've got the radio controls there. And I thought it was kind of cool too. You can actually turn on and off speakers uh, outside or inside, uh, which is kind of neat. And then you've got your little steps here, which have storage also, which is actually kind of sweet. I've already got some crap kind of hanging out in there. And then you've got a private, I'll call it a bedroom, right? So it's where the bed's at. And even up here, you've got, you know, plugs on each side, both standard one 10 volt and USB. I know it's kind of hard to see, um, but I thought it was nice, a nice little bedroom setup, private. You've got the uh, speakers up there too, and the air conditioning and heating vents, which is nice. And it's even got a door, which I'll try and make work here. So you can actually close close the door and have some level of privacy also. So it's a cool little cubby. Um, obviously the one downside is you can't see the TV, but honestly, I don't care that much. Uh, you got the main controls for generator, the uh, HVAC, and then the awning to extend and, and retract it. But this is literally what I could fit in 12 foot. Um, and I'm lying because there's a bathroom behind this door, which I'll show you in a minute, but you've got eight, again, eight foot of bedroom. And then this is about, I don't know, nine foot or so of living quarters. And then you open this door and you've got literally three foot, if that, of a shower with a skylight. And actually it's a good size shower. I know this is not the best video, but it's a good size shower. Just trust me, I'm six foot tall and I can stand up in here and have some space to spare. And then you've got your bathroom commode and some more storage. Um, again, more plugs. I, again, I loaded the thing with plugs. And why this door is padded, I have no idea. I think it's kind of hilarious though, but it's got a padded door. Uh, maybe it's, I don't know, for noise. And then you open this up and I purposely left both of the Cybergray Metallic, the Twin Turbo Z06 and the ZR1 back there on purpose, just so we could see how the cars fit in here in case you are looking to get um, any trailer to fit two cars. So the reason uh, for this trailer and its enormous size was not to have a big trailer. It was to fit two cars, specifically two Corvettes in the back garage area. And I had measured and measured and looked, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a guy that buys things new typically, and I, I did not want to buy any trailer. They're horrendous for uh, for value and they depreciate immediately and they're all the things that I hate about big purchases but sometimes you got to do it and this unfortunately is one of those times 
So the reason that it's 53 foot is I needed a 33 foot garage to fit two C6 Corvettes. And what sucks is I would have taken a 35 or a 36 foot garage, but you almost have nothing in terms of bathroom and bedroom and living quarters. You can do it and you can have a bathroom only, uh, but I wanted to kind of have something that I could take on the road and then you know, sleep over inside the trailer itself and have all the basic amenities, uh, even if they were small. Um, so that's the reason for the big, uh, the big trailer. And again, it sucks because 33 foot is just enough for two C6 Corvettes. If you want a CTSV or a Mustang or anything with back seats, this probably won't fit it. I might be able to, I haven't tried, but I measured this specifically for the two cars you see behind me and those two blue, uh, the ZR1 and the, what will be the twin turbo Z06 of the blue variety. Um, so anyways, that's, that's kind of why, uh, why it's so big and why it is what it is. So let's continue with the, with the garage area. Okay, so back to the garage area. Um, we've got the twin turbo Z06 here, which is going to streetcar takeover. Uh, CT Performance just gave it the once over and gave it a clean bill of health for the moment. Uh, but this, I wanted you to see, this is how close it is when parked for transit. And I'm a, I got a size 12 here and it's literally a foot. It's about one foot exactly from the, the edge of the splitter to where the door is. And uh, it doesn't get any better in terms of space here. It's, it's cramped, but it fits. So let me get over here and show you a little bit of the front here. So if I look forward, I did have them put in two uh, cabinets just to have something in terms of storage. Uh, it sucks because I hit my head on them at this point constantly. I haven't learned that part yet. Um, again, plugs, if you guys are looking for a trailer build or, or buy, plugs are critical. They, they typically have like one or two and they're in a terrible spot. So I had them put plugs literally everywhere because when you're doing events like, you know, half mile, mile, streetcar takeover, you need to be able to plug stuff in all the time, it seems like, uh, and plugs are important. And they're cheap when you do it ahead of time. Um, you can see too how tight it is on a width basis, just looking down. I've got about an inch and a half or two inches on each side. It's, it's 80 inches between the fenders and that's what it's designed for, so that's what it is. Uh, it's tight, but it's workable, so I'll take it. Uh, lights. I had them add literally three times the lights that came with this by default because, again, it's one of those things that you need, especially when it's dark out. Um, but even during the day, you can see it's light outside. It's nice having the lights inside here. Windows also is cool. Having windows so you can light this place up with natural light is awesome, too, uh, because you're often in the trailer if it's raining or you're hanging out, and it's cool to see what the hell's going on outside. Um, walking down, I was going to have them put cabinets over this fender um and it was going to be awesome and then i figured out oh shit then i can't get over the fender like over on that side to get out of the cars and actually move around so here i actually can now i had them take out or not put on the actual storage unit um so it's a good thing the other thing too is storage is weight and this thing is already eleven thousand pounds and with these two cars i'm at like about seventeen thousand pounds so it's already pushing the limits of what my 450 can do anyways this is in between the cars, and I'll try and get a good shot here. This is not the best cinematography, but again, I've got about a size 12 here, and that's about a foot in between the nose and the butt. And uh, I did undo the front straps on that ZR1, but you can see on the Z06, the straps are still hooked up, and I've literally space saved so I can get everything on the Z06 connected without having it overhang at all, so which is sweet. And the, the front... Um, honestly goes in the space just fine it wasn't that big of a deal which is cool these there are two uh, beds slash couches and i'll try and get a shot after we unload of what these look like when they're on uh, when they're unfurled but they you know one they're awesome because you need sitting space and they're kind of built in and they're beds too which is cool uh but two it sucks up space over the fender which you know sucks but it is what it is um again more plugs and then i've got the usb guys there too uh, for phone charging and whatnot and more plugs and more plugs down there. So again, I'm that dude uh, Anyway, we'll keep walking back uh, One more thing before I walk back too far the e-track. So on the walls, I've got two sets of e-track uh, The wall stuff's less, less important. Obviously on the floor. I showed the e-track. What I did not show is the e-track is actually It is hard to see but it's recessed uh, underneath which is actually nice and I believe that's because the whole thing is insulated. Um, the roof, the, so the sides, and the floor, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's what's going on. 
Uh, anyways, recess, E-Track is cool, and I have it the entire length of this, uh, of this trailer because you don't know what you're going to tow and, or what you're going to haul and what you're going to have in terms of space, so it sucks to have to, like, there are two D-rings back here, and it sucks to have to, like, rely on just the D-rings. I'm happy they're here, but the E-Track gives you, like, infinite, infinite flexibility to uh, hook things up wherever you want it. Let's see, what else am I missing? Oh, the race ramps. I think I mentioned those a minute ago. Um, one, they make it perfect because like literally the angle is just right and I can get these cars on and off without much fuss. Just so you can get a shot of that. And beyond that, we're gonna unload and I'll get some shots of the inside again. Maybe one more walkthrough quickly of the inside without any cars in it. And again, questions by all means, stick it down in the comments and I can uh, answer whenever I, I get a chance. Again, one more walkthrough and I'll stop boring you with this stuff. One thing I will say is, dude, this thing is like a mirror and the second the sun hits it, it will blind you. And so I'm gonna get this whole thing line -xed, I think. More picture of the back here. Again, generator up there, exterior lights, you know, basic switches. And then you've got the recessed ear track, uh, ear track the recessed e track. You've got the D-rings. You've got your exterior door on the right here. You've got your rear retract and extend for the awning. You've got your lights here also for something. Well, like I said, I'm still learning it there for something. And I can now put these things down and show you how it looks. I'll stick one down and give you a, a peek at it. Okay, I did one uh, with the bed layout so you can get a, an idea of what it looks like. And it's actually a pretty, slick design it's simple it folds up and gets out of the way and it's big enough i mean it's literally a twin size bed if not a little bit bigger and then you've got the couch version here and again it's you know easily fit three people maybe even four it's a good i should get a tape measure out it's a good looks like almost seven foot long to be honest um and now you can get a good shot of all the e-track which again is the entire length of the whole thing and what I didn't show you is we've got a 9,000 pound winch embedded in the floor. Again, for those times when we, uh, we break something at the track and we, we can't make it uh, back up here by ourselves, We have pushed cars on trailers more times than I want to admit. And the, uh, the winch will help us out a boatload getting things onto the trailer. Um, let's see, we can peek at these now that I've got some space. They're just your basic cabinet. Nothing too fancy there. I was gonna do this from the other side of the camera, but it's stupid. So one more nugget. Um, if you haven't seen on the CT Performance and even the DDX Auto Instagram, we did a dyno run of my gray ZR1 we just unloaded. And with a 300 shot of nitrous, it put down 1380, it was 1380 horsepower and like 1330, I think, torque. Uh, so I'm excited about it in general. I figured it was about 1400 with, uh, with spray. And I think we could, I think we could pass the 1400 mark pretty easy if we actually put some effort into it. But 1380 is amazing in and of itself. Um, beyond that, the JSB Twins update briefly. I've got a ZR1 motor at KTEC, so hooray! And with uh, some new plans we're doing with those cars, or at least the ZR1, I'm pretty confident we can get to 16, maybe even 1700 horsepower. And in the original video, I probably mentioned that, but it was more of a maybe uh, and not a definitely. I think definitely 16, I think maybe 17. Uh, and so between that level of power and a sequential gearbox, those cars are gonna be something to, uh, something to check out. So uh, anyways, I'll do a proper update here soon, uh, but that's my, my brief update for this video. Again, uh, questions, comments, you know, ask, subscribe, all that crap, and I will see you soon.